This is my e-tour compact electric bike in the folded position. After paying $70 for my last fill-up, I asked myself if there might be another viable option. I thought first of something like a Chevy Volt, but my condo parking space has no outlet, and I want my car to be able to take me on vacations and to visit relatives out of state. Distracted drivers make me afraid to drive on public roads with a Vespa or even a motorcycle. Firemen call motorcycles donor cycles. I'm a regular jogger, but a regular bicycle wouldn't work for me because I don't want to arrive where I'm going all sweaty. I saw an FAU student on a motorized skateboard, but I'd kill myself on that. So I brainstormed and Googled, and I found an electric scooter without pedals for which San Francisco gives a $150 tax rebate. I ordered one of those, but after talking to my local PD, discovered that they're not legal on the sidewalk in Boca Raton, Florida. Our government is very pedestrian conscious, as we all should be. But they said the very same thing with pedals was legal, authorized by local and state laws and a federal law, federal law PL 107-319, that was signed by the president on December 4th, 2002. You can Google that. So I canceled the order for the pedalless scooter, continued my search, and I found the e-tour. E-Tour has several pedal models. If I had a garage in space, I'd have purchased one of the larger 36 volt models. But I'm in a small condo with a small elevator and I want to keep it in a corner near the door. So the folding compact 24 volt works, 24 volt lithium ion works for me. Also, if I want to take in an arts festival or South Beach or something like that, the folding feature will be nice. When I placed my order for the e-tour compact, I wasn't really sure it was going to work for me, but gas prices had finally reached a place where I had to at least give it a try. I've had it a few weeks now, and I can't overstate how pleased I am with it. I'm ecstatic. Only last month, I was driving along in my new car with the windows rolled up, the air on, occasionally feeling a little bit sorry for the poor folks riding their bikes along the sidewalks. But now I'm zipping along in the breeze, enjoying being out with clouds overhead, seeing and smelling a few flowers along the way that I would have otherwise missed. Florida is mostly flat with a few gentle inclines here and there, and I only weigh 150 pounds, but I cruise along at from 13 to 19 miles per hour, depending on the inclines and the headwinds. I usually help it accelerate up to speed and then let it do all the work. Going to the mall or to the North Library, I have to cross Interstate 95, and I help it also on those inclines. But that's so brief, and it doesn't get me sweaty or tired at all. The bike takes back over, and the breeze cools me, and I'm back in rest mode, enjoying the ride, listening to music from my iPod shuffle or iPhone. If I let the bike do 100% of the work, I have a range of about 11 miles. I had a bike store install an odometer trip meter so if I see 5.5 miles, I know it's time to turn around or be ready to pedal before I get home. But with its six gears and Shimano derailleur, the bike pedals as well as any bike I've ever owned. So if I do exceed my range, pedaling's not a problem. I was happy to find that Boca has quite a good network of sidewalks and, uh, and this biking, jogging trail that runs north and south nearly the full length of our town and, uh, and it's completely removed from car traffic. I was happy to discover the excellent network of sidewalks that I hadn't noticed before. The e-tour has become my primary means of transportation. I had to know, so I purchased a device called Kilowatt online, 
that measures the kilowatt hours needed to bring the bike back to a full charge after each outing. And here's what I found. And I laughed. I could hardly stop laughing when I, when I got the numbers. A trip to the mall was 1.4 cents. The North Library, 1.4 cents. A round trip trip to church was 1.5 cents. And when a friend calls me to meet him up at the Caribbean Grill for lunch, it cost me one-third of a cent. Routinely, I will only be using my car now to bring home the heavy groceries or when it's raining. Uh, as I said, I do need to have a car. And as my dad told me, cars do need to be driven at, at least a little bit every week. And so that trip to the grocery store is going to exercise my car so that I can keep it. And, uh, but for everything else, this is going to be my transportation. For Starbucks, for the library, to meet a friend for lunch, to a movie, the e-tour is perfect and fun. I, once so far, I wanted uh, my MacBook with me at the library, so I put it in a backpack, but I think I'm going to buy a little side pouch just for my MacBook. These are my add-ons. Uh, I bought a Schwinn cruiser seat with springs. That was a, an extra... Oh, twenty, twenty-five dollars at, at at somebody's mart. Uh, the front shocks are nice, but there are no rear shocks, so the spring seat made a wonderful difference. And pedaling is still easy when I need to. Uh, I mentioned the odometer, which is uh, it's, it lets me know when I've reached my radius. Uh, I mounted the uh, the cable lock. That I think you can see there in, in the picture, uh, and I added a pouch. It comes with a little, the rack, it comes with a bike, but I mounted a pouch to carry a few small items that gives them some rain protection. And I keep in there an emergency poncho, sunglasses, a spare tube, and a little aerosol inflator. Uh, I laminated a copy of the federal law, and I've passed quite a number of uh, Boca police officers, and none has stopped me. Uh, and from their website, I don't, from what they're saying on the Boca website, I don't I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. They're, they're becoming very bike friendly and, and creating new, new bike trails all over. Uh, I bought a helmet and I have a little tiny cable lock that I got from the Sharper Image uh, for luggage use. And I use it to secure the helmet when I'm able to keep an eye on the bike. Uh, but when I'm locking the bike, I thread the bike cable through the helmet. Uh, I have mixed feelings on the helmet. I'd, I'd never ride a Harley without a helmet, but I'm pretty careful. I'm on the sidewalk and I'm much slower and I'm not mountain biking. I'm not doing extreme sports here. Uh, so sometimes I just skip the helmet. Uh, my helmet does have a visor though. Uh, it's nice when I use it. Uh, I bought an air pump with a pressure gauge and I top off the tires weekly. The front wheel has a quick release hub so I won't mind swapping tubes and inflating the new tube if I ever have to, uh, but I won't mess with the rear tire, at least not right now. It's, uh, if I have a flat on the rear, I'll just push the bike home and take it to a bike shop. But as time goes on, I may add wrenches to the pouch and step myself up to uh, replacing the rear, the rear tube. Uh, and while I was at it, I did replace the original tubes with puncture-resistant tubes and uh, something the the uh, the bike store guy called green slime was uh, <laughs> blown into the tubes it further res resists uh, puncture so I would try to avoid a flat rather than have to fix one and now I'll go uh, take it off for a quick spin E-Tour. Go for it. Give it a shot.